Now, we've gone in, we've created a new site, added users, customized it using web parts, added content to the web parts, and this final installment, I'm very excited to tell you about how SharePoint is able to connect to Outlook. Let's begin with our document library. So we'll click on the Share Document web part, and then under Actions, I'm going to click Connect to Outlook. And you'll see that Outlook opens up and asks us for permission. Of course, this is OK, so we'll click Next. And now it's populating the list under SharePoint List. And you'll see in just a second, our documents will populate. Here they are. For example, when I click on this Excel document, you can see that we're given a real-time preview. And you can see we made it orange in the last webcast. It still is. And then let me show you how the updating works. First, I'll upload a few more documents. Let's say these two PowerPoint presentations. And then, once they're uploaded, and we go back to Outlook, the next time we hit Send and Receive, not only is it going to check for mail messages, but it also check our SharePoint site. And you can see that it pulled down these two additional documents. This is great for a number of reasons. Let's say that you just had a team meeting and the secretary just posted meeting notes. You'd be able to go in and grab those notes automatically right from Outlook. And also, let's say that you're on the road and you don't have access to the internet. You already have all these documents offline so that you do have offline access, which is a tremendous, tremendous feature for you. Now, let's take a look at our task web part. And there's a variety of ways we can view this information. For example, let's set up alerts. And in this case, I want myself, Lewis, to be notified every time a high priority task changes. And then I'll click OK. I also want to show you uh, something else that a lot of people do, and that's notify you of all changes to a particular web part or site and have that sent as a daily or weekly summary. That's another great option. Once I create this notification, let's make a change to a high priority task, such as hire new field representative. Let's go ahead and say that it's now complete. And then let's switch over to Outlook and check for that notification. And we go to our inbox, we see this notification that the Hire New Field Representatives has now been completed. Let's take a look at a few other ways that we can view the information within the task web part. Just like we do with the document library, let's click Connect to Outlook. You can see that our tasks have populated within the task pane within Outlook. Just to show you the two-way communication, let's click on a task. For example, the Send Final Proposal to Print Shop. Once I open it up, I'm going to say it's now complete. I'm going to hit Send and Save and Close, and then I'm going to hit Send and Receive. And then I'm going to go over to our SharePoint site. Keep your eyes where I just highlighted the text. You can see that before I hit refresh, it's currently not started. And then when I hit refresh and the shortcut's at 5, you can see that it's now complete. Let's take a look at one more way that we can view the information within our task web part, and that's through an RSS aggregator. If you click on Actions, View RSS Feed, your default aggregator will open up. In this case, it's Internet Explorer. And then if we want to subscribe to this feed, we just click subscribe to the feed. And here you can see our, our feeds have populated. And we're currently subscribed to this. This is great so you don't have to go out and get information. The information, whenever updated, is automatically sent to you.
You can also easily connect announcements and team discussion to Office. However, let's go ahead and take a look at the calendar web part. We'll start off by adding in a new event. Let's add in a weekly team meeting. We'll make this a repeating event. We'll choose weekly and then have it occur every one week. Then I'll click OK. Now, let's take a look at this calendar. We can see here our team calendar within SharePoint. It's very common to have a number of SharePoint calendars. For example, you could have one specifically for vacation days. However, there's a slight problem. Right now, we have a calendar within SharePoint and then our calendar within Outlook. Let's go ahead and connect the two. Once again, we're going to click on Connect to Outlook under Actions and you'll see them side by side. Let's right click on one and choose view and overlay mode and you'll see events in blue are the events that are on our Outlook calendar and events in green are the one that's on our SharePoint site. In this case I see slight problem. We're gonna be on vacation this week so let's go ahead and delete this particular occurrence. And then once we hit send and receive that information will be updated on our calendar here. So take a look at the 21st. And you can see that it's been removed from our SharePoint calendar. I hope you've enjoyed this edition of Connections Replay we've gone in and essentially taking SharePoint 101 how to create a site customizing using web part technology and then take it to the next level by connecting it to Outlook if you like to learn about more exciting products like this please attend one of our free live events and you can find out more information at microsoft.com connections